just when I thought the leaks were out, they have bombed us right back to the beginning. Sponsored by Ting. We just hit 150,000 subscribers on this channel. This channel that is just barely over six months old and 11 million views and I think like 115 videos. And I'm just once again, incredibly grateful, incredibly thankful to all of you. And if you haven't joined us yet, YouTube still tells me that 70% of you haven't subscribed. Do make sure you hit that button and bell because there is just so much more and better coming your way. Overnight, both Kang and John Prosser released a bunch of new rumors and I haven't had a chance to really go through them and I thought I would do that now live with you. Starting off with Kang and Kang is 97.8% accurate according to the Apple Tracks website and that is over 46 rumors and that is top of S tier. That is raid boss rumor accuracy rating. But the thing with Kang is these reports tend to come up super last minute. And I joked before, you know, maybe Kang is sitting there watching things come off the factory floor or go into the containers or being entered into the, into the inventory systems because they are so last minute, but so accurate. And starting off with the phones, iPhone 12 mini, 4.5 inch super retina XDR display. And that's, that's actually a little bit surprising to me because I thought Apple would try to save some money by going with previous generation OLED displays, like the OLED display from the iPhone 10 or the iPhone 10s. But Super Retina XDR is a language that they used with the iPhone 11. So maybe they're using iPhone 11 panels, maybe the same panels they're using with the iPhone 12 Pro remains to be seen, but that's a much more modern and probably a much more expensive a much better panel than I thought Apple would go with for the lowest end, not the lowest end, uh, the least expensive of the iPhone 12 models. Wide and ultra wide uh, rear lenses. So same camera arrangement as the iPhone 11 base model, F 1.6, but native Dolby vision shooting. And this, this blows my mind. Apple previously did what they called XDR, extended dynamic range. And they did it by interleaving, by using every second frame to pull more data so they could combine, they could stack the frames as they came in. The A-series processors were fast enough, especially over the years, they got better and better, higher and higher frame rates with this, combining those two interleaved sets of data to make extended dynamic range. But this is full on high dynamic range, which is beyond even that. And obviously they feel confident enough that the A14 can do this, which really impressive. And Dolby Vision is, is Dolby's version of HDR. You also have HDR 10. And HDR10, I don't like it as much because it picks sort of one range and then applies it to the entire video. It's just like one opinion of what the dynamic range should be where Dolby Vision changes uh, throughout the course of the video. So you end up getting, again, in my opinion, a much better representation of, of what, the, what the human eye can see, just much better high dynamic range. And there's HDR 10 plus, which I think is closer to what Dolby Vision does, but Dolby Vision by far is my favorite. And if Apple is shooting full on Dolby Vision out of these phones, then that's just, that's just extra. Uh, for colors, black, white, red, blue, and green, remains to be seen if these are deep, rich, or you know, 2020 remains the year of the pastels or not. Wireless charging up to 15 watts, which is cool. You'll get some pushback on this from people who say that wireless charging isn't as efficient as wired charging. And that's absolutely true. It wastes more power uh, and it charges slower. You always wanna be careful with charging because charging creates heat and heat damages lithium ion batteries, which reduces battery health but Apple has gotten much, much better at managing the charging system on a nanosecond by nanosecond basis to keep heat down and keep charging speeds up. So while it isn't as efficient, it is way more convenient. And Apple has done nothing but push us towards this wireless future they've been talking about. So it's good to see them not just have the wireless technology, but start having better and better implementations of it. Uh, millimeter wave 5G on the US models, which again, really surprises me and in the opposite way of the Dolby Vision, because I thought that Apple would probably save these for the higher end and bigger models because just it's a more expensive modem technology. It's a more power hungry modem technology. And honestly, it's really only Verizon and a 
few other carriers, I think AT&T and maybe a few others around the world that are even entertaining the notion of five of a millimeter wave because yes, it is stupendously faster. Like here's a movie I want to download, oops, I already did, faster, but it's so fragile. It's FR2, the high bands, and they just don't penetrate structures. You know, you'll turn a corner, you'll go into a building, it'll start raining and you'll lose the connection. And as much as Verizon wants to tout those speeds, I'm still fully convinced it's not gonna end up being a consumer technology. I'd love, love to be proven wrong, but it's it's ideal for things like stadiums and not things like uh, places where humans live. 64, 128, and 256 gigabyte storage options. No headphone or charger in the box, which we've heard about with the Apple Watch previously. Apple will say it's you know to reduce e-waste, it's better for the environment. They'll be accused of nickel and diming us. And I think, you know, por qué no los dos with this kind of stuff, because the technology being put into this iPhone, which is equivalent to iPhone 11, including that Super Retina XDR display and that millimeter wave and just 5G modems in general, because I believe all models will have the frequency range one, the low and mid range 5G modems from Qualcomm, which are still expensive. Apple's gonna keep the price as low as they can. They're gonna eat as much of that cost as possible and removing uh, accessories probably just helps them stop a little bit of that bleeding uh, because Kang has this one posted at $699, which is a little bit more expensive than we heard before. The rumors before were $650, but still $699, way cheaper than any iPhone with these features has ever been before. iPhone 12, regular size, normal. iPhone 12, no adjective added. Everything the same except a 6.1 inch Retina, uh, Super Retina XDR display. Same 64, 128, 256, same colors, modem, everything. Um, and Kang is pegging that at 799. Jumping up to the iPhone 12 Pro, this is the 6.1 inch, so same size. It's going up a little bit in size, same size as the regular iPhone 11, iPhone 10R from previous years, 6.1 inch, still Super Retina XDR display. So it's unclear how Apple will differentiate that from the displays on the non-pro iPhone 12 models, although maybe they'll be using next generation this year, current generation. What I'm guessing is Galaxy S, uh, not Galaxy Note class uh, panels for this one. So better panel technology. Absolutely nothing about 120 Hertz if you're still holding on to that hope. Doesn't, doesn't sound good for this year, probably next year uh, sort of thing. And I've done a ton of explainer videos uh, previously on this. So just, I'll link to all of those in the, in the description. F1.6 native Dolby Vision shooting, a new seven megapixel FaceTime camera, a LiDAR sensor on the back. So it'll have wide, ultra wide and telephoto plus the LiDAR and the telephoto will go up to four times optical now, which is a double what it used to be. Apple introduced two times optical zoom with the second, with the first two camera system with the iPhone seven and then just stayed there uh, until now. And going to 4X is great because you can't always sneaker zoom, just like you can't always go back, which is why you need wide, ultra wide angle. You can't always go forward. You know, if you're at the park, you're watching your kids play sports, you're trying to take photos of your pets, you wanna just take a photo across the street, anything like that, you need good optical zoom. And I'm still really, really hoping that Apple does what Google did. And Google took their HDR plus and used the same technology in a different implementation to make super res zoom. And so I'm really hoping Apple takes their smart HDR, and I think they're going to smart HDR three this year, takes their smart HDR system and just applies that to smart zoom. So yeah, we get fantastic, four times optical, but then way, way better, maybe up to 12 times, maybe up to 20 times digital as well, because that's all, that's all computationally possible now. In terms of colors, gold, silver, black, and blue, that's probably the midnight blue we've heard rumored for a while now, the color of the invitations to the event. Wireless charging up to 15 watts, a millimeter wave on the US models, smart data. For storage though, 128, 256, and 512 gigabytes. No headphones and charger in the box. And this time they're keeping the price the same, 999 which is actually, I think, impressive because the panels are probably more expensive. The 5G modem is certainly more expensive. And if Apple's willing to just eat that to keep prices the same, 
where a lot of other vendors have used those as excuses to hike up prices, uh, sometimes considerably over the last year. I think that's great, especially because this year is 2020, just all that that entails. And then of course, uh, rounding it all out, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and now 6.7 inches. And again, I thought the sizes were going up because they had to fit in the millimeter wave modem. But if they're putting that from the mini to the max, then you know, wow, I got that wrong. Uh, they're just making the screen bigger, I guess, because they really believe that some people want need uh, bigger screens, especially people using them as primary computing devices. And then everything else just the same across across the deck. Pricing also the same, 10.99. So even though the iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max have probably better screens, definitely better modems, and they're larger, they have larger displays, pricing exactly the same as previous years. The difference between the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro Max, is that the Pro Max has a larger sensor on the camera, 47% larger, 1.7 pixels, um, and the word expansive is added before the description of the iPhone 12 Pro Max ultra wide. So we may be again seeing a time where because there's more physical space to work with, Apple is using that to make the cameras actually bigger on the bigger model, like when they had two cameras instead of one with the earlier uh, regular and plus models, which I kind of hate because I like having to just choose based on screen size alone, but I also like to get as much as possible if I am going with the bigger size. So you tell me what you think about that in the comments. In terms of release dates for these iPhones, this is where it gets complicated. Kang is sort of echoing DigiTimes saying that the 6.1 inch iPhones will come first, the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 and 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Pro, which may sound odd, but back when DigiTimes reported on it, I was just wild guessing that Apple has been making 6.1 inch iPhones for a couple of years now. The 10R and the regular iPhone 11 are both 6.1 inch iPhones. And it could be that just adapting those lines, those production lines to making 6.1 inch iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro was uh, less difficult, uh, you know, was less non-trivial than making completely new 5.4 inch and 6.7 inch iPhone production lines, and that's why they managed to get ahead with those. Anyway, Kang is saying that for the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 and 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Pro, pre-orders on Friday, October 16th, so the Friday right after the event, and then those orders will arrive on October 23rd, which is really standard for how Apple has operated events and pre-orders and uh, availability previous years. But then for the iPhone 12 mini, the 5.4 inch version, pre-orders on Friday, November 6th, with those orders arriving Friday, November 13th. And then just because it's 2020 and it's gotta be all in on 2020, iPhone 12 Pro Max, the 6.7 inch model, um, pre-orders on Friday, November 13th, arriving on Friday, November 20th. So just sort of scattered all over the next month and a half or so. Kang also said that Apple is set to bring back the MagSafe brand at this event. And MagSafe, if you had a Mac prior to like 2016, 2015, it was this proprietary magnetic charging cable that you could just plug into the side of your Mac. And if anybody hit the cord, it would just, the magnet would come off and everything would be safe. Your computer wouldn't go flying across the room. And Apple swapped that for USB-C, which isn't MagSafe, but they felt the utility of being able to use any port for data or for charging was worth making that change. Now, Kang says MagSafe is coming back, but in a very different way, basically replacing what was gonna be air power, but in a much more restrained sort of fashion, and that there'll be two MagSafe inductive charging pads for the iPhone 12 line, uh, MagSafe and MagSafe Duo. MagSafe, just, you know, not MagSafe Solo, but just MagSafe Nothing will be a single device charger, and MagSafe Duo will be able to charge two devices. Unclear if those devices can be Apple Watches because Apple Watches charge differently, they're not Qi standard. And that's part of the complexity that sunk uh, air power, I believe. So maybe this is just your, you know, your iPhone, you and your partner's iPhone, your iPhone and AirPods, that sort of thing. But that will be one of the accessories announced alongside the iPhone. And then lastly from Kang in terms of accessories, the HomePod Junior or HomePod Mini as it's far more certain to be called. Uh, mini version of the HomePod. It's only 3.3 inches tall, 
uh, powering the low-end speaker will be Apple's S5 processor. So that's the system and package, the S5, which is currently in the Apple Watch SE, previously in the Apple Watch uh, Series 5. So it's just a much smaller, more power efficient way of housing technology, very similar to what you found in the A-Series, which is in the, the big original version of the HomePod. And pre-orders may begin on November 6th with orders arriving November 16, any $99, which is frankly a great, way better price point to get people into the HomePod ecosystem than we've had before. And then not to be outdone, John Prosser was up all night dropping his own rumor depth charges. And he currently sits at 74.5% accurate at the Apple Tracks website. And that is over 47 rumors. And in Prosser's overnight tweet-a-thon, what, what we're seeing is him also agreeing with the original Digitimes report and now with Kang's report saying that the regular 6.1 inch iPhone and the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Pro will be coming first with the Mini and Pro Max in November. And for pricing, he doesn't have updated information. The last he heard, it's 649 for the Mini, which is 50 bucks cheaper than what Kang is saying. So. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, also, as you mentioned a couple days ago, AirPod Studio, the mass production for that isn't complete, uh, which means that they are not gonna be at this show. So no AirPods Pro now, maybe at the November event alongside Apple Silicon Macs, or maybe Apple just drops them in a press release the way they did AirPods Pro last year. And he's saying there will be two versions of those. One version will be uh, what he showed off uh, in his previous video, but he's saying now that that's the upper end, the, the premium model that's made out of better quality materials and that'll retail for $599, but there'll also be a lower end model, sort of like the stainless steel Apple Watch versus the aluminum Apple Watch. And the lower end model will start at $350, which frankly, when you hear a $599 price, you feel, ah, this is, this is HomePod all over again. But at $350, that's really competitive with what Sony and Bose and other people making true wireless over the ear headphones are, are selling them at. So it's a much better price point for Apple to get into the market. And then if you have the premium one on top of that, that's fine because there is literally no upper limit when it comes to audio. People who have money will spend all of it on audio. There are million dollar plus audio systems that I'm sure not even someone from the house of L who hails from the former planet Krypton could, could properly differentiate but wow, bang, can you charge you know a million bucks for it? So that's fine as long as the entry level price is 350. I think that's really good. In the bad news department, Prosser is saying that AirTags also won't be at the event, that Apple's decided to push those back to March, which is kind of weird because they were originally rumored for last year's iPhone 11 event, and they would have made total sense there. It would have been like Apple announcing the iPhone 7 at the same time that they announced AirPods. It just, it makes so much sense with the new Find My Network set up, the U1 chip placed into the iPhone 11, all the different interfaces and code strings that people have found in iOS 14. And then I thought when we heard about the Find My APIs, third-party APIs at WWDC 2020, that Apple was just waiting, that they were gonna get a bunch of third parties lined up so that Tile couldn't say, hey, you're being anti-competitive, you're trying to stomp all over our business. They'd say, no, we're enabling a whole bunch of competition, people who can't afford to make networks like you have. And that they would, they would give them three, four months to ramp up and then announce them now. But if they're pushing them to March, I don't know what that means anymore. The technology sounds like it's ready. Maybe third parties aren't ready. Maybe Apple wants more third parties. But next March is 18 months after we first heard about it. And after all indications, hardware, software, services, literally all the indications showed that they were imminent. Uh, and I just, you know, I never want Apple to release a product that's not ready. I don't want them to announce a product that they can't ship, like air power all over the, again. So I'd much rather have it right than right now. If any or all of this is true, it's just really super curious what's going on with AirTags right now. But at the very least, it will be easier on all of our wallets, especially with November coming up. So if you are looking at one of those new iPhones and you need to save some money to afford it, even a little, and you're at home or at work or just working at home and you have a ton of Wi-Fi, you're soaking in Wi-Fi and don't see the need to pay dime one extra for your phone data or talk or text, you can do that 
with Ting. Ting offers coverage on Verizon and T-Mobile. So no matter where you are, you'll have service options in more places. And it works with almost any phone, including every single one of the new iPhones, pretty much any slab or fold or flip that you can put a SIM card into. The average Ting bill is just $23 a month, and that can mean a lot of extra cash for you to put towards your next iPhone. And there are no contracts, no commitments. And since you're watching this video, you can get a $25 service credit to try Ting out. Just bring your own phone, bring your own number if you want to. Go to renee.ting.com and see how much you can save and get $25 off. Seriously, go to renee.ting.com or click the link in the description and start saving with Ting. And clicking on that link just really helps out this channel. To learn all about the new iPhone 12 and just everything Apple's announcing this fall, click on the playlist above. I'll take you through every product, every feature. Just click on the playlist and I'll see you next video.